Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm going to make an envelope and try and choose some paper and I might need you guys to help me. I have this embellishment right here. It's sort of an interesting color, but it says be awesome and it has some little jewels on it. If you watch a lot of YouTube, there's somebody who I think would like to have a card made with this, so I'm not gonna say who. Don't put any guesses down below. To to use a, a wood embellishment and layer it up, like I probably will, I wanna be sure that I have a roomy envelope. So I looked through my homemade envelopes and my stash was a little lean. So I'll just make it while we talk. If you wanna see a tutorial, I'll link down below, because I have a tutorial on envelope making, a couple of them, but I've been doing it forever, so I just, I go pretty quick. I'm going to make the square eight and a half inches because I want a big fat roomy envelope. You can do eight, but I want eight and a half. And I chose, I just took my envelope and laid it on here and went, mm, I like this part of the paper. I didn't want the part that was so washed out. One of the things that I think is so fun about making envelopes is choosing your paper and seeing how the finished envelope really looks. It, I guess it's kind of like making tags with paper, that sort of thing, where once you fold it up, it just looks different. You use different parts of it, you accent different things. I have the EK Tool scoreboard. I don't love the th tool thing that came with it. I taped it in and I never take it out. This is my scoreboard. And just like I tell you with your tools, you can do whatever you want. So I have marked the spot where you would score if you're going to do envelopes. So I've marked the, what is it, two and three quarters. And I'm going to do those straight across from each other. And I didn't pay attention to which way the stripes are going to go, and I don't care. Then I turn it. And I'm going to do the three and a half score. And you can see it starts to come together and you're starting to get how this is going to be an envelope. Then straight across, three and a half score. There you go. So by scoring, I never have to, or marking my pad, I never have to stop and look up the measurements. I just know. If it's not a permanent project, I use washi tape. So that's why you see. But envelopes, I'm always going to make envelopes. I like making envelopes. I don't know why. It's just fun. I think maybe I like it because you really can't mess it up. I mean, it's just easy. And, you know, I like things that are... I like to make things and I like it to be relaxing. So it's not rocket science. It's not super detailed. I'm going to cut these a little bit wider than the spot. Just so I don't have to worry about... A mess and like I said I haven't made an envelope in months but we can't really go wrong here it's an envelope people if you don't have a scoreboard and you want to make an envelope I have other ideas in my video but the basic idea is you can just take a card lay it down fold it over there and call it good okay now I made this nice and big so however I want to make my card I can then it looks a little crooked, but I think it's just the angled stripe of the paper. Now, when you make an envelope, do not put your glue on this whole triangle because you will glue it closed. So I'm going to take my glue, which hopefully isn't clogged up, nice, and put it right here on the edge. Tape runners work perfectly well. I'm sure you could use a glue stick. It might be a little wide though. And if you're worried about gluing it shut, Stick something in there, flatten it. And like I said, this is a big floppy envelope. You could use double-sided paper if you want. This is a fairly thick, nice uh, pink paisley paper, but um, thin, cheap paper works great. Then if you're super picky, you could be really careful. I'm still learning to le use these Tim Holtz scissors, so I have to cheat and go to my littler ones, actually, which seem to be covered in glue. I am not one of those people who believes that we need to make liners for our envelopes and be super picky. I'm not even sure everyone looks in an envelope when they open it because some people tear the top, right? But I do, if I get a little tweak in my trim, 
I just retrim it. There we go. Okay, now you get to see the front. Ready? Da 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 da. Oh, that turned out cute. And then what I'll do is I'll probably take like a, a Sharpie or something and write across the front of it really big when I address it. Oh, I like how that one turned out. That is beautiful paper for an envelope. And it's very thick, which I think will help protect my card a little because wood embellishments and if I layer it up. Okay, now, this is paper that came with this set. I just happened to be looking for printed paper for an envelope and I found it. And this kind of has like the paint smear look. I don't love this paper. So do you think I should make a card with it because it kind of matches the style? Or do you like this one that's a little more floral? Or ditch them both and go through my stash and find something else with these colors or that would work. Let me know what you think and I will be back probably tomorrow. I am working on No Paper Left Behind and I have about 20 cards. I still have one, two, three pieces of uncut six by six and clearly a bunch right here to work with, but my cards have amazing variety, so I'm super excited about them. That's been really fun. And let's see, what else? I checked my P.O. box, so I'm keeping up with that. I apologize to those of you who sent me happy mail recently, and I let it sit there for a week. I will do better, absolutely will do better. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're having an absolutely fabulous Friday. Bye-bye.